Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and today I'm going to show you a few of the highlights of the new features in Construct 3 release 424. Let's dive in. Now, first up, we've made a wide range of improvements to our macOS exporter. So I'm just going to open a template project to demonstrate this. Obviously, I'm recording on a Windows PC here, so I'm not going to show you, uh, show you everything about how it works, but here's uh, the existing macOS WK WebView export option. We've had almost a complete overhaul of how this option works. So um, when you choose this export option, you'll get uh, some new options, uh, including the ability to use a sandbox, which is um, important for whether you're publishing to Steam or the macOS App Store. Uh, you can uh, adjust the permissions, again, important if you use the sandbox as well. And um, you can also providing a signing identity. Um, what that will do is when you export your project, um, Construct now exports a series of scripts to help with signing and notarization because those can be a little bit tricky to work with on Mac OS. Um, so again, I'm on Windows, but I'll just uh, open the zip to show you um, what kind of uh, script you get exported. There's the dot app uh, folder, which is how um, app bundles work on Mac OS. Uh, and these dot command files are um, they're scripts to help with various commands, um, various tasks like signing. Um, so for example, sign.command will automatically run a command using your signing identity to sign the app for you. So you should, on the Mac OS system, just be able to double click that and if you've provided the right signing identity, it just signs your app for you. Similarly, um, the notarize command will just notarize the app for you. These are requirements for uh, Mac OS app publishing uh, in many cases. Um, but note, you'll need to run the setup notarize command first to provide some details about your Apple developer account. There's also sign ad hoc, so by default, an unsigned app can't be run uh, at all. Um, but if you do an ad hoc sign, uh, that means you can run the app on that machine only. So that's a good option for testing and development just to see if your export works. Uh, you can use that option to just try it out quickly and easily. Um, so other macOS improvements uh, include the file system plugin is now also supported on uh, macOS. Uh, the Steam plugin uh, is also supported on macOS. So this really brings uh, a macOS exporter in line with the Windows and the newer Linux F, um export options here. So all three now support um, uh, they support file system, Steam integration, um, everything that you should need from a desktop export from Construct. Uh, you may notice NWJS is not there. Um, it's further down the list. Um, it's now in the deprecated section. We are aiming to phase out NWJS. We believe uh, our new export options uh, do everything that you'll need um, for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Um, this is uh, it's just older technology. Uh, it's not working so well these days, and uh, we've got better replacements for it. So we are looking to ultimately remove that once we're really confident that our new options cover everything for you. So if you're still using NWJS, it's still there for now, but please do think about moving over if you can. Uh, just on our desktop exports, there's one other thing I'll mention is that when you um, go to export, there's a new option called bundle assets that will put all your assets into a single file named assets.dat, um, which just is a way to obscure them so people can't um, casually browse all the files in your export. That's available for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Okay, moving on. Uh, next up, another feature that we've added in this release is the uh, MIDI plugin. So this uh, MIDI, uh, you may be familiar with this if you've been involved with uh, music or digital audio. Um, it's a protocol for communicating uh, between musical instruments. So if you have something like a digital piano keyboard, um, you can very likely connect that to your PC and then get input from the keys. So it can tell you uh, which notes you're pressing and how hard. Uh, and you can also send uh, notes to the device as well, for example, to make an arpeggiator. We've got a couple of examples of that um, in Construct now, which I'll um, briefly highlight later on. Again, for now, uh, screencasting on Windows, it's not, it's not an easy thing to show off quickly, so I'm just pointing that out for now, um, but I'll move on. Whilst I'm in this dialogue, another feature we've got here is you can now pin your favorite plugins uh, to the top. So here I've pinned uh, Sprite and Text 
to the top of the dialog and that just makes it quicker and easier to find so you can see you know we've been busy adding so many features to construct over the years that this is quite a long list now um, so if you for example use uh, sprite most commonly you can pin it to the top uh, with a couple of your other favorite um, uh, plugins and oops uh, and then every time you open that dialog uh, you'll find them at the top there for quick and easy access and the same is true when you're adding a behavior and when you're adding an effect so that's just a nice usability improvement we've added while i'm in this dialogue i'll mention one other change we've made um, it's just that when you add something like the keyboard plugin or the mouse plugin um, these are added to the entire project and previously they disappeared from the list uh, this seemed to be a, a constant point of confusion for some beginners who would keep asking us uh, where those plugins have gone so now they're listed again but they're faded out so um, and it will tell you if you try to add them that it's already in your project so there's no need to add it again okay moving on again um, we've got some more improvements to the animations editor so if I add a um, sprite object quickly which I just pinned to the top um, so we've got a new sprite sheet importer dialog in the animations editor. Let me just show you how that works quickly. Now, if I right click in the frames and choose import from sheet, um, I've got a sprite sheet on my desktop here. And um, this is the new sprite sheet importer dialog, which gives you a lot, uh, many more options. So you can see here, I've got um, nine columns and four rows of sprites. And now I can, for example, click and drag to choose out just uh, those images from the sprite sheet and add those frames. And then when I import them, that's um, easily added them into the animations editor. So if you have a large sprite sheet with all sorts of different animations on it, you can more easily pick out just the bits you want to import into individual animations. Another improvement we've got in the animations editor is uh, over here with the palette. You can now save and load palettes. Um, and so there's some extra palette tools there, uh, including choosing how many swatches you have. Um, so for example, with pixel art games, often you'll use a very specific palette and you can now save and load that uh, set of colors uh, into and uh, from the animations editor uh, to help you manage um, your color palettes whilst editing your games. There's just one more thing I'm going to cover in this video, and that's uh, if you use third-party add-ons, um, this will be a, a nice update for you. So in the add-on manager, this is where you can uh, manage, install, and uninstall third-party uh, or externally installed add-ons. Um, it will now automatically update third-party add-ons for you using the uh, add-on section of the website. So um, I don't have any installed here, um, but if you have... Um, an add-on installed and the developer publishes an update to that to the add-on section of the website uh, it will appear in this list you'll get a um, notification appear in the bottom left of the uh, editor window when it starts up saying updates are available and then you'll be able to easily just uh, click update and uh, install that update for you um, so that's a great way to make sure your add-ons stay up to date um, because before you'd have had to uh, go and manually find the add-on page and check for an update and install it uh, yourself. So that's a um, nice improvement to make sure uh, you can keep all your third-party add-ons up to date. Lastly, I'll just show you some of the new examples uh, in this release. So previously I pointed out the MIDI plugin, which is new, and so there's the input example, which shows um, can highlight the keys that are being pressed on the connected MIDI device. There's MIDI output, which functions as a simple arpeggiator, sending notes to a device. Uh, we've got some uh, new demo games and templates uh, and some uh, interesting new um, project files to try out here, including Rat Pursuit, which is a new demo game um, that uh, our partners have developed uh, for Construct. So check that out. There's been absolutely loads more in this release. It's a big release packed with all sorts of new things. So do check the release notes and uh, see the intervening uh, release notes um, for all the beta releases since the last stable release for the full details because there's a lot of stuff in there. We've been really busy trying to make Construct as great as ever. So thanks for listening and we hope you enjoy using Construct.